Hello everybody and welcome to this latest installment in our series of Easter devotionals. Today we're going to be thinking about the topic of serving others and the text that we're going to be reading from for this is Matthew chapter 20 verses 20 to 28. I'm just going to read that aloud for us now. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and, kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, reading this passage out of context, the first thing that jumped out to me was uh, the question, well, who are the sons of Zebedee? And we find the answer elsewhere in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 21 to 22, it says, Going on from there, he, that's Jesus, saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So, quite simply, the sons of Zebedee are two men called James and John. They're both fishermen, as was their father, and they are two of the original twelve disciples called by Jesus. So the next question that occurred to me is, well, why is their mother asking this favor of, of Jesus uh, you know, she says, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Sounds like a very grand thing to be asking from Jesus. Now, we can't know for sure what the motivation behind this question is, but I wonder if she recognizes that Jesus is who he says he is. He's the son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the one who's going to have ultimate victory over sin and death and to free God's people from captivity. And I wonder if she's thinking, well, this is my son's opportunity to make something of themselves. Wouldn't it be great for them to be able to leave behind the, the menial, backbreaking labor of fishing to become something great, to go down in history and even to stand out from the other disciples? Now, this may not be what she was thinking, but as a guy who works in a corporate setting at a relatively low level, I can relate to this. You know, this thought occurs to me a lot. I think, well, wouldn't it be great to climb the ranks? Wouldn't it be great to get a promotion? Wouldn't it be great to be a manager, um, to move on from the grunt work? Wouldn't it be great to really make something of myself? And maybe some of, uh, some of you who are listening can relate to that as well. But Jesus' response is perhaps a bit surprising. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. I notice that James and John both say yes to this, but I wonder if they really understand what Jesus is getting at here. As people who are familiar with the story, we might understand that he's talking about his crucifixion here. He's saying to James and John, if you want to follow me, then you need to take up your cross and you need to be prepared to die for me and for the sake of my name. Now, reading on a bit more, this passage develops a little bit more and gets a little more interesting. When the ten heard about this, so this is the other ten disciples, they were indignant with the two brothers. And this kind of makes sense, you know. They, their mum is asking Jesus to raise them above all the other disciples. And I imagine they're thinking, well, why should you get special treatment over the rest of us? Do you think you're better than us? Aren't we, aren't we all just working just as hard as one another? And I think that here, not only have James and John missed the point, but I think all the disciples have missed the point. And Jesus clearly recognizes this, and he addresses it with what he says next. The passage tells us, Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. 
Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is saying to them, this stuff that you're talking about, the the authority, the glory, the fame, this is what the world values. This is what everyone else is striving for. But I'm calling you to be different. I'm calling you to be servants. I'm calling you to make yourselves lower than everybody else. And Jesus repeats this message often in his teachings. And of course, he puts his money where his mouth is time and time again in this regard in the Gospels. He even says here, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. That's pretty mind-blowing. Let's just think about that for a minute. The Son of the Son of Man, the Son of God, who created the entire universe, who has all power and all authority, did not come to earth, to mankind, to be served, but to serve. That's crazy. I think that this willingness of Jesus to serve his fellow man is illustrated all throughout the Gospels, but perhaps most clearly in the story of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, a nasty job which is normally reserved for the lowliest of servants. I wonder, how does this message come across today? How do, how do we hear this? Does this sound good? Does this sound like something that we want to do? Do we want to make ourselves lower than others? It's so, it runs so against what our culture stands for, and yet this is precisely what Jesus calls us as his followers, to do. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your example of servant-heartedness. Lord, I pray that you would help us to have humility to follow your example. Lord, help us remember these verses as we interact with the people around us, with our neighbours, with our friends, with our family, with people we find difficult. And Lord, help us to remember to place ourselves lower than others. Help us to remember to be servants for your name's sake and for the sake of your kingdom. Amen.